few words about the problem called emails. Now, the first things to notice here are that the blog readers form this undirected graph G and that G actually grows with each daily update because these add edges between nodes that were previously two hops away. And so the questions that we want to answer for this problem are, does this process of adding edges eventually lead to all pairs of nodes becoming directly connected? And if so, after how many days? Now, of course, the answer to the first question is yes, if and only if the graph is connected. And then for the second question, let us take a look at what happens for a given node Ri in the graph. You will notice that after one day, Ri will get directly connected to the, all the nodes that were uh, within a distance of at maximum, at most two from it, right, initially. And then after two days, it's going to get connected to all the nodes that were within a distance of at most four. And then after three days, this is going to go up to a distance of at most eight and so on and so forth. You got the idea here uh, in order to compute the number of days elapsed uh, to uh, needed to connect uh, two nodes Ri and Rg. We're just going to take the base two logarithm of their distance, of course, round it up to the next integer. And so if we want to compute this for the whole graph, we're going to take the same log two, but this time applied to the graph diameter, that is to the largest pairwise distance in the graph. Now, great, we have this formula using the graph diameter, but the next issue becomes the fact that the naive classical diameter computation algorithm takes uh, n times m time, which is too much for the given time limit. So, the next key observation here is that, in fact, we are not really bound to outputting a single, a precise value, right? We have this one-day margin. And this kind of points out hints towards the usage of an approximate algorithm for the diameter computation. And it turns out that there is, in fact, a very simple way of approximating a graph's diameter by simply computing the distance d1 from r1, which is the first node in our graph, to the furthest node uh, from R1 in our given graph. And this distance D1 we can compute by a very straightforward basic breadth first traverser with complexity n plus m, so much faster than the previous n times m. And by triangle inequality, we can show that this stands within a factor 2 from the real diameter. And the nice thing is that by applying uh, log 2, this 2 factor becomes a mirror plus 1. So I will let you check the math here, but it turns out that if you output the ceiling of log 2 of d1 plus 1, you are guaranteed to be correct for all the test cases. Okay, so I'm going to wrap uh, this presentation up uh, with two quick comments. The first being that there are, of course, better approximation algorithms for the graph diameter, but those are not really needed here because what I have just described, the simple thing I have just described, suffices for this problem's purposes. And uh, the second command is that there are also, of course, faster exact algorithms, right?